Hey everybody, welcome to Terminus Live once again. I am Corey DeMeno, as always, and uh, today I have a guest, as always. Hi, I'm Keith Brooks, nice to, nice to meet you. Uh, your hair looks lovely. <laughs> um, first, uh, I'd like to plug Thea, our partner. Um, you can, it's a new video network and creative community. You can find Terminus Live at Thea.network every Wednesday after the live stream. So go to Thea.network. Yeah, Thea.network. <laughs> All right, Keith, would you like to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself, and why, why should we be talking to you? Uh, yeah, uh, you should be talking to me because I slipped Corey 20 bucks so I could come play video games and pet <laughs> dogs here. Um, they also fed me, so that's awesome. Really, this place is just awesome. I just came to hang out at Terminus. Uh, I'm an actor, director, and writer here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I do the movies and the TV shows, and I get to come play video games. That's really, I don't know what else to plug about myself. Like, I'm super excited about this. Yeah, playing some Mario Kart. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get my ass kicked, and I, I can't wait to cuss you out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, well, let's, let's just go ahead and get it started. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. get this going. Um, while, while we're getting this started, I uh, wanted to ask you, uh, and I mentioned this initially, uh, well, actually, before we get into like yeah. advice, because I want to do what you do, um, tell us a little bit about um, like where you went to school, how you kind of got to where you are today, what your path was. Yeah, I, I'd always been interested in acting. I started when I was in like elementary school just doing community theater sort of stuff and uh from that point on i i went to college undergrad at barry college in rome georgia um and then from there i went to juilliard and nyu uh, at the same time so i got my master's uh mfa um and from that point yeah i'm gonna be dry bowser that sounds dirty but yeah i'm gonna be dry <laughs> bowser uh so yeah from that point on um uh, once i came back to georgia i just got involved in anything i could as far as acting i was just interested to see what all was out there? I think my. I just want to make cool. sure you're not doing motion controls. Okay, you're good. Cool. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is not like my Atari at all. Um, but I, I got involved. Uh, literally, my first gig was my first gig back in Georgia was from a Craigslist ad, which oh, wow. is not what I advise to people. But it, it turned out wonderful. Um, I met uh, Christopher Escobar, who uh, runs Atlanta Film Festival now. Um, and, and was in a film for him, and from that point on, just started networking, getting more material on my resume, reached out to an agent, and since then I've been in um, Walking Dead, Constantine, uh, Star, Stranger Things, um, and a couple upcoming things like uh, Your Preface to Go Into Hell and uh, Son of Shaft, and then uh, opened up my own, me and a buddy of mine named Trevor Gardner opened up our own production company called Bean Dip Productions, and we produce our own films and I'm just rambling now I have a lot no, of that's, coffee that's per you're supposed to be rambling that's yeah, the yeah, point yeah. of this <laughs> yeah and that's and the, the kind of dovetails in the how we met yeah, right. which was mm -hmm. on uh, the the I oh hit the A button to go oh, gotcha yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a radio play that you and Trevor um, wrote and direct yeah yeah it's, it's a, a radio play about a, it's like a 1930s sort of rip off radio thing but it's in the vein of like the shadow or the whistler or green horn or something like that um but it's set in a world full of monsters and uh cory plays an on the radio personality in our on the radio show which is inception <laughs> if i've ever heard it and i'm going the wrong fucking way shit okay um <laughs> but uh yeah and so so it's it's a, a murder mystery that is predominantly an asian cast and it's just super mm -hmm. fun and weird and quirky and what am I doing with my life? <laughs> and uh, I think what, actually what's really interesting about The Eye is um, since it is a predominantly Asian cast, you made sure to cast Asian actors in the Asian parts. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's crazy. Because like I remember the auditions, I was like, oh, this, this character would be cool. Can I do that? And you asked, are you Asian? <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, it, it was important, especially yeah, in today's, is. yeah, to have authenticity and, and representation. And I think so many times, you know, I'm friends with a lot of uh, actors here in Atlanta and a lot of Asian actors, and the parts that are offered to them are generally not flattering. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that the impetus for it is there was this movement in the early 1900s called the Yellow Peril, mm -hmm. where. Um, mm -hmm. It was basically Westerners developing characters that were insults to the Asian community, such as Fu Manchu, or it's even where we get ideas like Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon mm -hmm. started off as these type of stories. Uh, and part of our goal was to sort of, I don't know, in a way, take those characters back. Um, and 
and also just to test my own limits. Like, I've been learning Chinese for a radio show, which is weird. Uh, but it helps because I'm writing in Chinese, you know? Um, so, yeah, again, rambling because I don't know what to do with these fucking mushrooms. <laughs> And then also, um, the the actual monsters are from uh, folk, folklore, actual folklore and, and stories. Uh, you didn't just make up things that were kind of Asian-ish. Yeah, yeah, and you uh, are in first place and I'm in tenth, so that shows you how <laughs> life is going for me and Corey. <laughs> the different, um, well, you're doing all the talking, I'm just <laughs> yeah, listening. That's, that's how you get it. You just want your, <laughs> you your gamer score higher. It's, you're like, here, tell me about your life. Get it, uh, um, yeah, no, I mean, there's definitely characters that we do invent, but for the most part, we wanted to pull from existing mythology. Mm-hmm. And to me, I grew up as a huge fan of, of horror movies, whether it be Freddy and Jason or the original shared universe of the Universal Monster movies. Mm-hmm. But in research, I found that there was no equivalency of Dracula and Frankenstein within the Asian community, like within Chinese mm-hmm. cinema. Mm-hmm. They didn't have that. In fact, like the first Chinese horror movies in like 1928, there's not another one to like 1962. Uh, it's actually forbidden to make one. Um, and, and that's an insane sort of thought, that there was an entire genre that was not allowed to be made, that's foreign to a, a Western audience. So taking a lot of these monsters... They have to be from the mythology because that's all that existed, you know. Right, right. Um, but we do take like that that original Chinese horror movie was called Song at Midnight, and it's a Chinese version of Phantom of the Opera, and we do have that character in there. But taking some of those again, yellow peril, yellow peril characters like Fu Manchu, and sort of incorporating it into the fucking. Motherfucking banana peel. Um, Into the motherfucking banana peel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the artistic <laughs> term for it. Um, so yeah, so that's that's what we tried to do, and, and then also there's a mixture of like Herbert West from the H.P. Lovecraft story Reanimator, mm-hmm. and uh, we have other characters like that, like some Stephen King references and stuff like that. Um, and then your character is actually a historical reference, the first ever actual radio announcer who you yeah. play. What was that? You told me the name and I immediately forgot it. It's, it's what, Wolfgang von Voorhees, which is awesome because yeah. it fits into the monster world with, um, why does my car have like Back to the Future wheels going? You know, um, that means you're going to get a boost, I think. Oh, yeah. If you're sliding. So if you hit the jump button while you're turning, you'll do like a drift and you get some boosts. And then when you let go, it releases. Ah, oh, that's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. I am not good at this game. <laughs> but at least I get to play. So yeah, see, that's sort of the world that we're... Uh, we're trying to build something that feels like another world, but vaguely similar, like an alternate history sort of vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's fun. It's super fun. And plus, it, it, I think in anything you do, you should try to push your own limits, whether that's writing, directing, or acting. And this definitely does that. You're already finished. <laughs> I just started the track, Corey. <laughs> Like, I just got out of the garage, <laughs> and you're on the next fucking race. <laughs> this is... I might have played this a couple times <laughs> I thought this was our game. <laughs> hey, I got hit by a blue shell, though. <laughs> After you already won first place. <laughs> that was a new kid. <laughs> like, oh my god, I had to pay $500 in taxes. How much did you get back? $3 million. <laughs> like, that's not... Yeah, but what about my struggle? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, so I guess now we can get into how do I how do I become you? How do I okay diabetes <laughs> and then <laughs> I have to be well well endowed. You have to work on that and then um, <laughs> um, uh, not that I know, not that I know from pre- he's he's above average size in his general. <laughs> um, this is weird. This took a weird place. Uh, <laughs> You know, honestly, like, to me, it was, oh, my God, these goddamn, uh, does anyone curse as much as I do on this so far? Like, I think I've already said all of George Carlin's seven words in, like, five minutes. Um, to me, my entire acting career was about working my ass off and always pushing myself. Right. If somebody has an opportunity, awesome, let me go try it. And especially the beginning years, it's like, it was an education. It was me learning what I can and what I can't do, and then pushing my own limits. Mm -hmm. I'm a person specifically who doesn't like to be told there's a part that's not right for me because they don't think it's in my wheelhouse. Like, I Mm -hmm. I don't... I come from theater, and in theater, you can do anything, you know? Uh, It doesn't matter what you look like. Uh, There are certain parts that are more authentically played by other people, you know? That's totally understandable and totally acceptable and totally the right way to go about things. 
but as far as I can be a hero, I can be a villain, I can be a love interest, I firmly believe that all those character traits are within my potential. So when I first came back to Atlanta and was interested in doing film, it was still at a time when film wasn't even an option here, right? Right. So it was a lot of independent film. And I, I think I earned my bones, if you want to say that, since I'm playing, I'm playing Dry Bowser. I'm uh, playing a character that's it. a skeleton. Guys, get what I... Fuck! I'm in the water. Um, but I, I earned my way on those things. Mm-hmm. And through that, got my name sort of known within the community, I guess. Right, right. But I think it's uh, there's a great George Harrison quote, with every mistake, we must surely be learning. Um, and so every time you go out there and you try something new, you're improving your own skill set. You're improving your own abilities. You're learning and broadening your horizon more. And I feel, especially with film, every time you're on set, you're taking in more and you're becoming more professional about it, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so, to me, it's that. It's... Uh, and it's also when people weren't hiring me, that's when I made my own company and started mm-hmm. making my own movie. So that process could continue no matter if it was on somebody else's dime or not, if that makes sense. Right, right. That's, I'm, I'm in 12. How the fuck am I in 12? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an angry... You already finished? <laughs> Turns out there were only 10 people recently. <laughs> <laughs> How am I playing Zelda and you're playing Mario? <laughs> no, I don't even understand this. <laughs> oh my god. Twelfth. The game was just like, let me take over. <laughs> 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 I mean, while I agree that Bowser should lose in the grand scheme of things, this is some bullshit. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so basically what you're saying is, is to become you have to work really hard and not stop ever. <laughs> Ever, ever. I mean, th- there comes a time when you can sort of... But I don't think you should ever rest on your laurels, you know? Right. I think the people that are satisfied by not growing any further are the people that shouldn't be doing this in the first place. Right. You have to be scared. Like, there's, there mm-hmm. is never a moment when I go on stage or go on to a set where I don't have that little butterflies in my stomach. Yeah. Granted, I should not eat as fibrous of a breakfast as I do. But it's that same sort of, like... I'm nervous about it. And because I'm nervous, I know that there's still excitement, there's still passion there. Mm -hmm. But every time I try something, I'm going to try it in a different way and see what the results are and push myself in those regards, right? Yeah. And I think that that's the key to being, A, continuously able to work and not getting burned out. In this business, it's very easy to get burned out on stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's also people can see your dedication. People can see your drive and your passion for it. And that makes people want to work with you more. Like... Right. I really enjoy working with you on the eye stuff because you're talented and you're not an asshole. And you seem <laughs> happy to be there every time, right? Yeah. And so if, if me on a very independent level, if that's what's driving me to hire people, I can only assume other people are driven by similar concepts, you know? Right. Yeah, you don't want to... You just at, at a base level, you just don't want to work with a jerk. You yeah. Wanna, you wanna, you're, when you're on a set, you're going to be on set with someone for... 12, 14, 16, 20 hours. Exactly. You want to be with someone who is, is going to take it all in stride and, and really, um, you know, be energetic and, and not be the person that's like, Man, fuck this, when are we going to go home? Or exactly. This and that. You want somebody that's down for the cause, as it were, and somebody mm-hmm. that can bring something to the table. And I think if a person is challenging and pushing themselves and it's not just a paycheck, then they, they bring that element of excitement and passion about your project. I think as a director or as a storyteller in general, you're putting your passion out there and hoping someone else sees the need for it or, or the interest in it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and to have people that are excited to be a part of that, I'm going to want to hire you more often, you know? I'm going to want you to be a part of making my dream come true. I'm sorry, I got weird faces. Cause I'm, ah, fuck, I got hit by a car. <laughs> and then drove into another one. Maybe we shouldn't have this race on a busy highway. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe we should go with traffic. Maybe that's an <laughs> idea. This is Mario. It's a dangerous world. Yeah, this is like Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Oh, my God. That'd be, that's the next place to take the franchise. Fuck Vin Diesel <laughs> and The Rock. Get a bunch of dinosaurs. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm still convinced Kingdom. it's going to space. That's the oh, only oh place God. left to go. Space oh, Drift. The final oh, frontier. So yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Cross it over with fucking Star Trek. That would be oh, amazing. Oh, man. 
Yeah, that would be so awesome. Get warp engine and engage. That's yeah, <laughs> terrible, Vin Diesel. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a, that was Sylvester Sloan, really. No, it was awesome. Though. He could be in it, too. If you smell what the Federation is cooking, that will be great, right? <laughs> Are you doing good? Hey, fifth. Yeah! Moving on up. There you go. Top yeah. half. <laughs> I feel that was condescending. <laughs> <laughs> How am I back in tenth now? Well, that's so that's the overall ranking. Oh, I don't understand the world. You get like points for each race. I like how you're explaining this to me, like I've never seen a video game, but I, mean, I feel like I haven't. Like everything surprised me. Like there are wheels on my car. Like I'm not, a, I'm not a good person to interview. I'm sorry. Um, uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the Rock, I think. Right? Yeah. But if The Rock goes to Star Trek, if he goes to outer space, wouldn't he be an asteroid at that point? Uh, yeah, meteor. Uh, meteor. 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 <laughs> meteor. Yeah. Technically. And then when he comes back to Earth, it's a meteor, right? Yeah. Okay, I got it. Got it. Got it. I'm sorry. That's officially my new favorite. Like, <laughs> rock shit. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm not going to be the bone guy anymore. I'm going to do something different. Just to spice it up. I'll yeah, let you win that time. <laughs> I'll be something different, too. I'll be... Oh, I'll be Cat Peach. We'll, be, we'll both be furries. Yeah! That's what I like about Atlanta. <laughs> the furry community? <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> right, let's see. You got a preference of... No, I mean, I, I don't know what's happening. Was that Excite Bike? Oh, yeah, there's an Excite Bike. Oh, well, that, that, that is yeah. definitely the thing we need. And, and an F Zero. What? Oh, yeah. Uh, low battery, but it's probably fine. No, I mean, I'm not going to win anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll be like a little brother playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's not actually been plugged in this whole time. <laughs> the computer's been playing. <laughs> That's why I'm in the corner. Why doesn't it fucking turn? <laughs> we don't let Keith touch electronic things. <laughs> Um, so, of all of these projects that you've been doing, do you have a favorite that you've done? Anytime I get to work with Corey Domino, that's my favorite. <laughs> hey, no, uh, seriously though, <laughs> <laughs> that's obviously not true. <laughs> it, is. <laughs> um, you, it is. You should read his bio on our website. It's a good oh, bio. Oh, it's true. Well, if the bio says it. Yeah. Um, if, now, when I see that bio on a different program, then I'll believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to say. Sort of like uh, I, I'm one of those, and I think it comes from I, you were a theater person. I think mm. you know this, where you do a show and then immediately it's gone out of your head, so you can focus on the next one or whatever. Right. Uh, that's always sort of been my my mentality. Um, but there are like moments that I'm just hitting the walls. That's all I'm fucking doing. I'm not even driving the car. <laughs> I'm just running. I, there's a. I'm not even on the track. What if it's happening? I'm in the water. Point is. <laughs> um, yeah, Walking Dead's cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. They, they all have special moments, and they all lead to interesting things, right? Like, I liked Constantine because I'm a nerd, and I like comic book movies and stuff. Um, I got to hang out with Samuel L. Jackson for Shaft, so that's neat. Nice. And uh, Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell has a hell in it, so that was cool. <laughs> and the food was good. So, I mean, it all depends. And there's nothing quite as satisfying as making your own stuff and seeing it come to life. But 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 I sort of separate those in different categories, you know? Right. You're, so, not, you're more like a passenger on the other things and the driver in your own things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Which is an important distinction because I get car sick when I'm a passenger but not when I'm driving. Same here. Same here. Yeah. Yeah, motion sickness is a bitch. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so bad at this game, clearly. Exactly. That's what it is. That's why I'm running over tomato patches or whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> um, so do you... You mentioned how, you know, as, as a theater person, you feel you can play anything. Do you feel like you are uh, tend to be typecast, and do you try to, like, buck against that, or is there anything you can do to buck against that? Um, yeah, I, I totally think at a, at a certain point, people tend to see you in a specific way um, amongst casting directors and even your agents. I'm very lucky that my agents, I think, share the same mindset that I have, that I'm more than just the creepy scary looking guy you know what I mean yeah, I was looking at your IMDB it's like homeless man greasy man <laughs> yeah uh. so, so there's a lot of that but then the way I combat that personally myself is to try to find the texture in the character that is different than the ways I've played it before right you know um, or, or if there's two two characters that are too similar a perfect example is I did um, 
I did this play called Faith Healer, and it's mm. an Irish play. Uh, uh, oh my god! It's basically like four monologues. Are you already fucking done? How do you do this? <laughs> what kind of collusion? I call collusion. <laughs> You're colluding. No collusion. No collusion. <laughs> You're colluding with the Cooper Kingdom. You're the collusion. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. Um, so yeah, so I, I did this play called Faith Healer. And it's basically about this Irish Jesus figure who's a drunk. So maybe not too Jesus, but still, you get the idea. So I, I did it once when I was probably 20, and then I came back and did it again when I was 29. Huh. I was a very different person, but I played the same part. And so to me, it was, A, on one level, I can't play the part the same because I'm a different human and I'm a different actor and all that Man test. never steps in the same river twice. Exactly, yeah. Pocahontas. Oh, the fucking way, man. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that's where it originated. Yeah, 100%. Uh, <laughs> So, but with that, it's also, I have to challenge myself, in addition, to find a new interesting thing so it's still exciting for me. Excite bike. Excite biking. Um, this used to be my favorite game as a kid, Excite Bank. It was so fun. Um, also, I didn't want a lot in story, apparently, because I'm like, I get to ride around in circles, fuck yeah. <laughs> but, but that's sort of my mentality is, okay, so you want to see me as a specific thing every time. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to show you how those specific things can be different mm. and bring different levels to defy you in a way so I can further define me. Um, and in that way, like, I feel that I've gotten... I don't know if I've gotten respect because you can't really say when you have other people's respect. Right. But it's interesting that casting directors will now see me for different parts, you know? Um, so I, you don't feel like, as you know, you were hired to play a certain thing that you need to play it a certain way... Um, like you might upset the director saying like oh I don't want you to play it like this or do you do you take those risks and just hope the director will pull you back if you yeah I, I think it's a lot like that I mean I think it's it's you want to find as the actor you want to find the truth in the character right you want to study the character and, and then more importantly you want to see what you can bring to it that's why they hire you is because you're going to bring something unique to it yeah mm -hmm. um, that's why they pick you above anybody else right so in the auditioning process I'm going to bring something that I think is interesting about it. Uh, uh, one of my philosophies of acting is not be interesting. That's what a lot of people will tell you to do, but I think it's be interested. I have to find something that makes me want to play this person uh, or being or monster or rolling furball or whatever. And uh, in that process, in the auditioning process, I'm trying to find that thing. If I get the part, then nine times out of ten, it's because of that interested uh, approach that I took to it. Um, and so when I get on to set, it's about working with the director to try to, I don't know, maintain my interest and theirs, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. I mean, I think acting, in most arts, are, are collaborative in their nature. Right. Um, like you're fucking in first every fucking time. I don't understand how you're so amazing. <laughs> Just know all the tricks. Um, but yeah, and, and I think that's, that's that. And the more you are attempting to be collaborative with someone, the more you yourself grow. Right. I think I'm just saying words at this point because I'm so no. distracted by Mario. No, I'm like, collaborative banana apple cobbler. <laughs> and you're like, okay, we shouldn't have got Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Was Trevor not available? <laughs> oh, wait, Trevor. I should have gotten him. Damn it. <laughs> I got seventh. That's all that matters. <laughs> that, and the game stops. And you st yeah, <laughs> it's, it's better it's, when the game's going. They, they, like, I feel like you're you're getting more into. Yeah, I'm getting more into saying, and then I'm like, I'm all tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the fuck is this? This is beautiful. So, did you? Um, was there like a particularly hard lesson? Like, what what was the hardest lesson to learn? As you in your career path, or what was the one that maybe took you longer than maybe it should have to learn? Uh, it was honestly that idea of I, I had always had the idea. Like, okay, so I grew up poor, mm -hmm. uh, super super poor, and I was always I wanted to be Walt Disney when I was a kid. I wanted to make stories. I fell in love with cartoons and horror movies, and I just wanted to tell stories like that. And it had never occurred to me that that wasn't an option based on where I was or my socioeconomic status. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And this is a weird so, tangent, but... So no one told you no, yeah, at least. Yeah, like I didn't necessarily have a supportive family or anything, but I was a dreamer and I thought, I can do this. I could totally do this. And uh, I went to this 
National Speech Convention. Uh, I, I did like a lot of oratory stuff in the competition, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I lost. And they told me the reason I lost was because I didn't have a suit. What? Yeah. Oh, and that's so, sad. But that was like that first moment of people are going to judge you based on what you look like and the appearance and the expectations that they have of you, right. whether or not the quality of the material is there. And then one of my first auditions in New York, I went in and didn't even get to read. The casting director said, you don't even look human. You look like a Sasquatch. We're not hiring Bigfoots. Oh, man. And it sent me out. And I'm like, Jesus, Jesus Christ, this shit's rough. But instead of, and it hurt, like definitely it hurts. I'm a person, even though that's not what scientists say. Um, but it's... <laughs> What, the, what are people even? What the? Where am I even at now in the race? Okay, yeah. So, um, but that everything's upside down. What the fuck did Eleven do to me? Uh, so yeah. So this is uh, instead of it being the thing that destroyed me, I sort of took it as a, I'm going to get it out of spite, or that's going to inspire me to go further. You know what I mean? If that makes sense at all. I'm, I fell off again. Is this pitfall level? Is that what this is? Um, <laughs> But fine, if you're going to see me as that way, I'm going to do everything I can to prove to you that I'm not that thing. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even if it's just proving it to myself at times, if that makes sense. So that, but yeah. that was the hard lesson, that the world is not going to see you the same way that you see yourself. Right. Yeah, you're, you're always going to be the hero of your own story. Yeah. And so you'll see yourself a certain way. I, but I also I think other people can be very limiting, especially in the artistic world. They can say, oh, well, you're only good to be the fat guy or the scary guy. But you have the power to say, that's not the way I see it. I can do things differently. Right. And, but that does become the impetus and the challenge to yourself to say, I won't. So can, can you actually give like a specific time uh, like where... The character, you could have done it maybe in a, a stereotypical way, but then you chose to kind of subvert it in some way. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, I can give two, and they may seem like minor, you know, examples or whatever. I did this... Uh, there's no small roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no Only small Sasquatch roles. Actors. Yeah, exactly. Sasquatch <laughs> actors. That's me. Put that on a shirt. Well, exactly. <laughs> That's going to be my new business card. <laughs> Keith Brooks, yes. cool diabetic Sasquatch actor. <laughs> um, but I, I look like the white Rick Ross. Anyway, um... <laughs> So I, I was doing this independent movie uh, directed by a guy named Anthony Mackay, who's a super cool director. And it was like a martial arts movie called The Passive Fist, uh, which mm. is a classic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, the character was supposed to be like a mob boss, and it's sort of like inappropriate, but the name of him was uh, Ricky Vash, and they called him Ricky the Retard Vash, right? Mm, right? Which is a very inappropriate sort of name, whatever. But I got what they wanted. They wanted him to be like a weaselly sort of guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I read that and thought. I don't want to play him that way. I want to give everybody a reason to say that he has problems. So I played it like he was schizophrenic. Hmm. So instead of playing the typical sort of approach, all right, let me do something completely different. I felt that they brought me in because I looked thuggish. Right, right. But instead, I'm going to give you an unstable sort of scary person. And then they rewrote the script to match that. Oh, wow. So that was a- an example of it, right? Um, uh even when I was doing, and sometimes it doesn't always, oh my god, why why would you squirt everything in my face? That's not a Corey, that's to the game, but that's... Oh, later. Yeah, Corey's going to do that after we finish. That's the, <laughs> that's the post-interview. Terminus, after dark. Um, but, uh, even with Stranger Things, um, I have like a bit part in it, right? But the... I basically just like get... Clerk, like grocery clerk or something? Yeah, yeah. I just basically get my ass kicked by Eleven, which is fine. Nice. Uh, nice. But we did a bunch of takes where it was me being scared for my life and pulling a gun and, and some, thus making Eleven villainous as opposed to the hero that everybody wants her to be. Right. But that's a different way. And I think that makes it, you know art interesting is when you take something, oh, I think I understand this, but what if I looked at it, I blew myself up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on the borderline of like Confucius like wisdom and then I fucking fall off a goddamn bridge. Um... <laughs> But, but it's... I did it again! What? <laughs> You're in a tanuki suit! Fly! Uh, <laughs> anyway, but... What makes art interesting is... Oh, I think I understand this. What happens if I look at it from a different angle? What if I try to tell the story of Star Wars from Darth Vader's perspective instead of Luke's? You know? That's the prequels, right? Well, I mean, but it, what if I did it... Uh, I did it good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They weren't just so whiny about it. Yeah. Uh, not uh, Anakin, not Wanakin. You know. 
So that's sort of, I, I don't know, to me, that's what it's about. Again, and it's, you know, rooting back to challenging yourself and, and challenging your understanding. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'm just happy you're in second right now. I know. It's the greatest shame. Oh, wait, wait. God! No, oh, no, I got hit by... Uh, yeah! No, 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 no! Ah, dang it. Oh, my God, I'm hitting everything. I'm hitting everything. Oh, fuck, I'm just... Fourth. Ugh. Oh. Oh. That's literally the worst <laughs> place I could have gotten. <laughs> I'm in 11th and I just fell into Blade Runner City like 18 times. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what sort of um, films or directors or actors uh, kind of inspired you um, as a kid and now and as you were coming up through this industry? Um... As a kid, it was a lot of, like, Alfred Hitchcock uh, as a director, Tim Burton as a director. Mm -hmm. I really, really like uh, Richard Donner, um, who did The Omen and the original Superman. And he mm, has right. uh, um, these directors that I feel just leave their stamp on things. Mm -hmm. And then as an actor, it was always, um, like, I love Michael J. Fox. Uh, there's yeah. something about Michael J. Fox that's so, or even Bill Murray, that even if they're playing themselves, basically, in the parts, they feel so genuine and honest and inviting to the audience. Mm -hmm. I really like uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, mm -hmm. who I feel is a chameleon in everything he does. Oh, yeah, he, he loses himself in a row. 100%. Role. And I feel that there's... A, like, Daredevil with, like... He's amazing. Down, he's... But... As Kingpin, I'm terrified every moment he steps on the screen. Yeah. I love Ben Foster. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's actors here in the community. Like, I'm a huge fan of Mark Ashworth mm. um, and April Billingsley and Hannah Fearman and, like, all these actors. Hannah's great. Hannah's great. Like, yeah. they're, they're all phenomenal. He was phenomenal. on the show. Oh, that's awesome. On my first guess. Hannah's amazing. And, and, like, I love all these actors, and it's it challenges me as an actor to step up my game, but also as a director and writer to want to... I want them to come work on my stuff because I think it'll enrich me and make challenges me to be better in every single regard. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's... I'm just a big fan of... Um, yeah, that's. I'm sorry, I'm just distracted by all the things. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to be. Cat I saw the word peach cat. I don't even understand. Cat peach. Cat peach. And it's pink. Oh, there's four different kinds of peaches. That's pink. Well, I know there's peach, Chilean. Peach, I know there's peach. Chilean peach. peach. Because it's a type of fruit. <laughs> That's the quality of writing. <laughs> my, my amazing material, right there. Challenging myself every time. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll be a I'll be a Koopa Kid too. Oh yeah, do it, do it. I always love the Koopa Kids. They're awesome, and plus they have that '80s hairstyle. They're not, and they're not even sorry about it. She's fantastic. Oh yeah, I I was bummed when it was Bowser Jr. and they got rid of the Koopa Kids, and now they've brought them back, and which is awesome. It's just great. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Whatever you Looking want to do, sir. What, anything gets, uh, I will find a way to bitch about all of it, so no worries. Uh, let's do... And I'll rage quit and write an email. <laughs> Ooh, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, let's see. Let's just talk about, like, what are your favorite... Uh, what were your favorite games growing up? Since we're we haven't oh. talked about video games at all, and it's kind of that's kind of part of this. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, uh, I mean, I love Mario. Believe it or not, I used to be good at Mario games, and then oh, adulthood, it's like these buttons. I don't understand them. Um, I don't know why I became a Mel Brooks character there. Uh, <laughs> but I uh, Mortal Kombat is my favorite. It's my favorite franchise. My favorite games of all time. Um, and so I, I love those. Excite Bike was the shit. Uh, what about you? Oh, me? Yeah. Um, no one wants to hear what I like. The interviewer becomes the interviewee. <laughs> There's a fucking airplane. What am I doing? <laughs> All right, tell me about your favorite games. My favorite games, uh, ugh. there was, so I played a lot of, like, Nintendo. We had a Nintendo, and, like, we borrowed a friend's, uh-oh, my controller's messed up. We had, we borrowed a friend's Super Nintendo occasionally. Like, we buy it for, borrow it for a couple months, and then give it back. Um, so, like, I played a lot of... Legend of Zelda and, and Super Mario, Super Mario Brothers three specifically. Yeah, it was the greatest game ever made. So good. Um, we ha I had a Game Genie, so oh yeah, I was able to actually beat that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles oh. uh, Nintendo game, which is like impossible. It's the hardest game in the it's world. So hard. Um, and uh, there was a game called Dragon Spirit for NES. I don't know if I remember that. that one. I think it was an arcade game, but there was like some crummy uh, port NES of it. port of it. It's fun. It's like a top-down kind of uh, airplane. What well, would be an airplane shooter, but you play a dragon. That's awesome. It's really fun. Um, there was a game called Marble Madness. I remember Mar that. Marble Madness. That was 
it was technically so we tried to get our dad into playing it and it was like on sale at Winn Dixie or something. <laughs> and so we got Marble Madness saying like, ah, how hard could marbles be? And it's like famously one of the hardest games yeah. ever. And that like turned him off to it altogether because we were like, no, no, go that way. Okay, no, go to the left. And then, and so he just never, he never got into video games. <laughs> um, and then as far as like Super Nintendo games were, like the Final Fantasy games were always my favorite uh, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, was one of the greatest games game. of all time. Yeah, just just a bit. the story alone in, in Chrono Trigger is is so good. And Final Fantasy VI, I think the story is amazing. I would I would love for that to be like an adaptation, like some sort of HBO series. Of Final Fantasy It'd be amazing. VI. I, I just think some of the storytelling in the games. I mean, storytelling in games right now is phenomenal as well. But those old school video games, I felt that they had less to do it with, and were still amazing. I, I always admired the mythos of, oh my god, are you fucking serious right now? Uh, which is one of my favorite games. <laughs> no, I always admired... The that seal m- approval on it? <laughs> <laughs> I admired the mythos of, of Mortal Kombat, oh. specifically, because it was such a... It was a fighter game that had such a rich storyline to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get these nuggets at a time. Yeah, yeah. And they developed it. It was the long play, you know? And that's awesome. And, and I think, you know, I, I fell in love... With the Atari and playing uh, the Superman game for the Atari, even though it was basically just two dots flying, but still it was it was powerful, a new form of storytelling that I really think our generation latched onto first before right. ninth. Are you fucking, you're you're making in, in, incremental strides here. So. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I dug. Um, and, and Game Genie was the greatest revolution. Game Genie was so fun. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. I could be I could be uh, uh, Hammer Brothers Mario throughout all of Mario. The entire thing. I just wish there was a Game Genie for life. You know what I mean? Taxes yeah. instantly done. Yeah, let me put that code in. You know? <laughs> Unlimited money. <laughs> Flight. <laughs> yeah, it would be amazing. Um, Mary Nev Campbell. All sorts of cool <laughs> codes. I remember playing Turtles. The only time my dad ever tried to play a video game with me was the Turtles game. And I died, and I think it was then he. I, I was probably like seven or something like that, and I think I yelled the word "fuck." <laughs> and then I wasn't allowed to play Nintendo for a little. while. <laughs> was it that original Turtles game? Oh yeah, the oh, one that yeah. induced everyone to say the word "fuck." Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. I don't understand the physics of what's happening here. Well, there's there's like an up updraft of water. But how are we all breathing, and how are these cars operating? Is more of and the bombs? I just set off a bomb underwater. Look, I own sharks, and this is not how that works. You own sharks? I do. I have two pet sharks. What, what kind of sharks? Uh, they're rainbow sharks. Ooh. They I, sound friendly. Yeah, they are. They, I mean, they they want to think they're scary, but they're not. How, how big are they? They are about like that, I would oh, say. Okay, they're that like yeah. You don't have like a giant tank in your house, no. like a Bond villain. No, I wish I did. I tried to put <laughs> lasers on their heads, but they're not having it. Um, I have them, and I have a, uh, I have a Pleco fish, mm. who's like a giant catfish, who is like from here to here. Oh. I figured I could take my hands off the controller because it's not like I'm doing well. And uh, yeah, you're, you're fourth. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, and then I have uh, a bunch of shrimp and snails. Oh wow! You have non-traditional pets. I do. I do. I will get a dog soon, but for now it's those guys. Where are you gonna put it? Uh, in the uh. tank with them. Just <laughs> chill. <laughs> I have a like their tank is like right beside my balcony. And then yesterday, this baby like squirrel, probably not baby, a little like an adolescent squirrel, mm-hmm. was coming to hang out with me, and you could tell my sharks were uh, jealous because I was playing with the squirrel all day. They like to, oh, fucking, sh- when they get pissed off, they like take the plants in the aquarium out of the soil and throw them around. Oh, funny! They're little bitchy sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this has gone to weird places. Anyway, necromancy for uh, mis- <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, man. Are we, are we getting any questions online? Is anyone? anyone uh, watching? Like, people are like this guy's boring. Fuck this. Bring back Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> That whale, eel thing looks very pissed off. Oh, he is. Oh, my God. He's win. And I'm in 12th. How am I in 12th? I was in 4th like two seconds ago. It was all the shark talk. <laughs> I got distracted. <laughs> so if you could, if you could just uh, talk to your uh, 
let's say like twenty one year old self, what would you tell tell him uh, career wise? Mm. We we'll, we'll, we'll stay stop away drinking, from like, yeah, yeah, like, stay from like lottery. Don't or sleep with that things. girl. Um, and then career wise, I would say have fun. Yeah. Like, like that's the thing is, I think people take it to as an actor. This is the weirdest thought in the world, but but I think it's important for actors to hear. Getting the part doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like, it's great if you get to work, but do the audition. Do the audition and learn from it. Do the audition. And that's half the work. Pushing right. yourself. I, I think being an actor is not about how many roles you book, but it's about being able to actually do the work. Putting the time in it, pursuing it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so many people try it and they try it for the wrong reasons because they want to get famous and all that stuff. And I just, uh, to me, I mean, more respect to you for whatever, however you want to live your life, but to me, that's all bullshit. Yeah. It's, it's, do it for the art of it, do it for the escapism. Like the, the thing about, um, Thespis is considered the original actor in Grecian stories, right? Mm-hmm. And the term... I'm a, I am a thespian. Yeah. My parents yeah. didn't take it too well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, me too. I was yeah. in part of the thespian society. Yeah, and, and so <laughs> thespian uh, you know, means follower of Thespis. Uh, and we generally associate it as being uh, an actor. But the original ta- terminology for it had more of an implication of somebody who cannot live by society's rules because they have something else compelling them. Mm-hmm. And I feel that that's what most artists are. I can't work a nine to five. Whoop. I My finally dad. crapped out. Oh, uh, here let's let's break it like a Kit Kat bar. Yeah, you can have crunch. Wouldn't that be terrible if I did that? Here, let's put you in our in the special. Oh yeah, I get Oops. a special control. Uh oh, I think I'm, we might accidentally switched. Uh, uh oh well, we'll just switch characters halfway through. Whatever. Yeah, it's totally it right. don't matter. But yeah, but like so, the thespian originally uh, had the connotation uh, of meaning somebody that couldn't go by everybody else's lifestyle. They they had to do their own thing. And I feel most artists feel that way. They feel compelled to do what they do. They wouldn't be satisfied working the nine to five. I forgot how to run my life. Okay, uh Yeah, and I, I it, it's almost like this. Like the controller I had before was a nice man sized controller. <laughs> but now I have like Warwick Davis controller and <laughs> Terrible. That was fucking terrible. Hey, he's, he's a man size. He 45? Is size. What is that? 45 minutes. We have to play this for 45 more minutes? Um, but yeah, I feel like my fingers are in a Chinese like finger trap. So close to yeah, it. that's probably. Oh my god, this game is so three dimensional. Shit's flying out at you. Instead of taking the red path, I'm going to take the green path this time and see if that benefits me. One will take you to a new world. The other will <laughs> be will back wait. and work on Monday. Thanks, Morpheus. <laughs> that would be an awesome addition. Is Neo from the Matrix to Mario Kart? <laughs> Whoa, I'm in first. <laughs> but yeah, that's the advice I would give myself as a 21-year-old is don't take yourself seriously. Just do the job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I think people get caught up in what they get caught up in, what would they get cast in, and, and how casting is going to see them. And it's, how do you see yourself? If you see yourself a certain way, you can change everyone else's perspective. And what if I hate myself? Oh, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I think that that's more important than <laughs> dealing with your acting career. Oh, it's, yeah, probably. It's coming yeah. in terms of that, you know? <laughs> I do think like self-care is an important way to find self-improvement in arts. Right. Uh, I think it's all tied in. Whatever, Jesus fucking Christ. Whatever your philosophy of life is, whether you mean to or not, you manifest itself in your work. Just don't take it too seriously. Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I fell off. It's all over. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it should be fun. I mean, that's like with with our company, our being it production stuff that we do. You're already fucking done. Um, it's. <laughs> If it's not fun, then why the hell are you doing it? Right, right. Yeah, especially if you're doing your own thing. Exactly. And I want everybody, I want all the actors involved and the cast and, and crew or whatever, and anything we do to have fun. Um, we play games when we're on set when we're shooting like live action stuff. Like, we play the Toy Story game where anytime we yell, Andy's coming, everybody has to fall out. Oh, funny. Um, it sucks when they have cameras in their hands. But <laughs> <laughs> um, Casey asks, how oh. did you know you wanted to direct? 
Um, I didn't actually want to direct for the longest time. Uh, it was that sort of thing where me and uh, Trevor, hi Casey, me and Trevor uh, Garner started our Bean Dip Productions company again because nobody was casting us. And so we're like, okay, well, we need somebody to, we, we wrote a movie so that we could star in it and be what we wanted to be. We both wanted to be martial arts guys. And our first movie was a movie called Too Long with Kung Fu, Thanks for Everything, a six year old and an eight year old. Uh, it's a really nice title, but I play an eight year old and I looked basically like this. And he plays a six year old. But we didn't have anybody else to direct it. And mm -hmm. when we were talking about the things we would want in a director, it became very apparent that we both knew exactly what we wanted. So fuck it, why don't we direct it ourselves? And then the same way you get the acting bug, I sort of fell in love with it. I mm -hmm. fell in love with talking to actors and collaborating with them and talking to directors of photography and, and sound and, and trying to... Like, one of the things I love to do is I love to learn different languages. And being a director is almost like having to learn 75 different languages. Because I want to communicate with every single crew member in a way that makes them know I'm competent in this. Mm -hmm. I understand what they're doing, and I appreciate it. Um, and so that became a challenge of, in and of itself. And I love challenges. Except for this challenging ass. I don't even know where the road is. I don't know what the fucking road is. Is this the road? That's water. That's water. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Casey. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that was sort of the impetus of it is, well, no one else is here. Oh, turns out I know what I'm doing. Oh, turns out I love this. This is fun. I, I think acting will always be my first love after Neff Campbell, of course. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, directing is, is way up there. I really enjoy it. Yeah, how many languages do you actually speak? Uh, I speak English, uh, okay, uh, French, Spanish, a little Italian, a little Latin, a little Russian, a little German. I have a degree in German, but it was only because my teacher was hot. And uh, I'm learning ASL in Chinese right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, Wu Shi Wan Zhong Lui. I like Chinese people. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> 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 the uh, the best word is uh, the word for panda in Chinese is xiong mao. That's cool. And mao is the Chinese word for cat. So it's kind of like a cat that walks weird. It's kind of what xiong mao means, which is totally the best description of pandas I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that this one race alone has taken me into 75 different terrains, and I don't understand... This, this truck is great because it doesn't loop. It just goes from the top to the bottom. That's amazing. Started from the top, now we're here. This is, yeah, the Drake of tracks. Is what this is. <laughs> Did he start from the bottom, though, really? I know. He was no. on Degrassi. Yeah, if you're on Degrassi. That's hardly the bottom. Your mom's a millionaire. He didn't start from the bottom, you <laughs> dick. <laughs> Shot on Degrassi, okay? <laughs> That's not true. Gangsta. That is gangsta is getting shot in real life. But. And it was his friend's <laughs> fault, okay? Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, yeah, and, and Donald Trump had a small loan from his dad. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. It's, it's all, we all have struggles. That's, <laughs> I mean, what's a million dollars, really? Yeah, really. <laughs> um, I guess we should start kind of wrapping it up. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. It's just when, when we do get the 45 minute signals. Uh, we should do one more question and then. Okay. okay. <laughs> You're letting everyone know how the magic happens. People Corey. love to know how the magic happens. All I know is they told oh, me I had to wear pants the entire card. time. <laughs> That's all I know. What was it? What? What? Huh? Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Um, oh, this is, uh, I guess we should ask, uh, what's, what's the future for you? What do you, do you have projects coming up? What do you hope to do in the future? What haven't you done yet that you really want to try? Um, I, I'm, I'm just really interested in, in, in pushing myself in, in all sorts of different ways and trying new things, whether that be trying new characters or, or whatever. Uh, like I said, Son of Shaft comes out, I don't know when, um, but you can go see me in that if they don't cut me, knock on couch. And uh, I'm also in Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell, which I don't think they can cut me. I think I've, like, can't photobombed enough scenes where they, they would have difficulty doing that. Uh, so that's on Adult Swim, and those people are super awesome and super cool. Um, and uh, the show that we're producing now, The Eye, which Corey's in, and Corey's amazing in, um, you can find it all over the internet. Look up The Eye in Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that 1930s noir 
Uh, and it has an amazing cast. It has Bob Carter, who's been on this show before, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you might know Bob Carter from Dragon Ball Z. He is a friend, he is a friend, friend of the show. Friend of the show. And a friend he of Terminus. loves Terminus. He does. He could not shut up about how much he loves Terminus. Dude, he adores you. Like, all right. the fucking time. He's like, you gotta get Corey Domino in here to do more things. <laughs> That's my Bob voice. It's not as good. Also, we also adore his wife, September Day. It's amazing. Is, September's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, yeah them together are the people. cutest couple. A power couple, oh, really. God. September's in the show as well, and we have a bunch of, like, um... Walking Dead cast members, Mark Ashworth, who I mentioned earlier, April Billingsley, uh, they're in the show, Rob Prago, um, a bunch of local talents and amazing people. And uh, we're at, I think we've released our fifth episode, and right now we're at like 490,000 listeners. So from five episodes, it's pretty awesome. Oh, we're wow, still that's looking, a lot. Yeah, so that's we're great. still looking to go further with that. And then, um, uh, what else was going to say? I killed Seong Mouse. That's not right. That's pandas. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, and then, then the next thing I'm looking at directing is a short film about kidnapping Amy Adams. So there we go. A lot of stuff happening. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine you're just going to like just film your scheme, your your heist of yeah. kidnapping her. Well, the film is called... Let me, let me tell you the film. I'm pitch it to you. Yeah, yeah please name. do. So right now it's called In Regards to Amy Adams. Mm -hmm. And it's two acting students who kidnap Amy Adams so that they can learn from her because she happens to be shooting a film in Atlanta. Okay. So they kidnap her and they bring her back to their acting class. And, and uh, well, one of them is kidnapped. The other one's like, what the fuck did you do? And then their acting teacher steps in into the class and is like, I can't be a part of this. And then Amy Adams escapes. Um, and they have to go track her down, but she has a bag over her head the entire time. Right, it's right. like a so you've you've already approached Amy Adams and uh, actually I did <laughs> send an email to her agent asking if it was cool, but I figure if we shoot enough coverage, if we like mess up, we can like you know we can blur out them saying her name, and it could be Amy Jo Johnson, who I think would care less. But you know, but also it might not be as kidnappable. Uh, Power Rangers, yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Because you know who Amy Jo Johnson is. <laughs> like, Pink Ranger? Yes. Yeah. I love it's you. Like one of the first, probably one of my first crushes. Oh. Wait, who was your first crush? Was it? Oh, man. I had a poster. So I got a poster from, I think it was Golden Grams of Paula Abdul that I had oh, in my room. Oh, that's awesome. That's and awesome. It was, like a, it was like a joke in my family. It's like, this is Corey's girlfriend. Oh, well, that's amazing. Mine was Elvira and, oh, then, nice. and then Amy Jo uh, Johnson. Nice. Yeah. I also had Barbies because I was like, oh, I thought they're cute. Well, they were. Yeah. 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 It's like, why is it weird for a kid, a boy to have doll like she's a great dolls. role model yeah exactly. i mean she, she does doctor, all these different jobs she's an astronaut she has her own house yeah uh, and still like takes time to take care of herself you know like yeah. you know, that's good yeah. yeah she dates multiple guys but that's fine it's a modern world <laughs> well she's a beard for ken for a while for yeah. a long time but i think she has like rodrigo or something now or something <laughs> i don't know i don't keep up with all the He's a single mom. Yeah, 100%. But she's still pulling it through, you know? And that's awesome. Very I love memorable. the Simpsons episode of the Barbie. The uh, Malibu Bar Stacy. Malibu Stacy. Don't ask me. I'm just a girl. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I felt that I could make a Simpsons reference and you'd be like, I got it. It's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when we had <laughs> Brian hard. on. That's hard. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had Brian Lenano on and they just back and forth just all... All Simpsons. That's, all have you seen any of the new seasons or anything like that? I yeah, I kind of gave up on that. No. I watched the, a Game of Thrones episode that I watched recently. That was pretty awesome, but yeah, yeah. I'll catch the how the horror specials. The they're always ones. amazing. Yeah, the Halloween Treehouse of Horrors or whatever they are. The last one where, where Homer's like eating himself was like yeah. disgusting. <laughs> like it's <laughs> truly really yeah. disturbing. Do you prefer? Okay, in, let me just give you a stack. Right, yeah. Simpsons, South Park. Futurama, Rick and Morty. Oh my god, don't make me choose. I think, okay, so I think S South Park did a great job of staying relevant, better than The Simpsons. Yeah. Did. And it's funny that South Park makes fun of The Simpsons for being so long running and now they're... Just like as long running. Like their 25th year or yeah. however long it's been. Um, Futurama is great because it probably has the smart, like the probably most over-educated writing staff oh, at any TV show ever. They're all like... Math uh, geniuses yeah. they invent a theorem for a joke, <laughs> basically. Um, and then Rick and Morty, I think, is great because it subverts a lot of expectations and has a lot of those um, very meta. I, I'm kind of a sucker for for meta jokes Me too. Too. Me too. And the way that Rick breaks the fourth wall constantly. All My favorite fan theory, and I think it's actually true. They, I don't think they'll say it, 
but I think Rick is aware that he is in a TV show and knows that he has to keep it interesting or else the show is going to get canceled. And I think that also lends to his suicidal tendencies throughout the show is that being mm-hmm. trapped sort of nature. But as political and wonderful as that answer was, fuck off because you didn't actually answer me. Which one is the Which better? Fam- oh, man. I'm gonna, uh, I have to say... I have to say Rick and Morty, I think. That's a good choice. It's a solid choice. I, I think I'm a South Park guy yeah. just because I like when people pass gas. That's not the actual answer. It's because <laughs> I, I think it's just really brilliant stripping down complicated concepts to their bare minimum and being able to tell them and execute them in that form. Yeah, South Park is great because you it's like Shakespeare. It's highbrow and lowbrow at the same time. Yeah, 100%. And so you can have those very complex issues and they... T- kind of show shades of gray. It tends to be a little black and white, but mixed with fart jokes and yeah. and like men bouncing on their testicles, which and- is amazing. Oh, like, <laughs> spooky ghost, spooky ghost. Yeah, mm. it's phenomenal. I I think you should do a show. Well, I shouldn't tell you about it, but I think I should tell them about it. You should do a show where, like, one hour you're interviewing a guest, and then it goes on for a second hour where they just start interviewing you out of nowhere, and they pop in like the world's hardest games, and you have to play <laughs> right. Like, have the hell show for you, right? That'd be a terminal yeah. terminus, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> death, death round. Well, yeah. we also, we're going to be doing Terminus live, live at Terminus. So we're that's be amazing. Doing terminus oh, that's a great... live, live. I think we should call it Terminus live, live at Terminus. I actually really yeah. like that yeah. title. <laughs> I think, I, yeah, I think that's phenomenal. I think that's great. Um, and I think the format we're going to do is. Um, have some of our presenters come on and play for ten minutes at a time, and essentially like a lightning, uh, oh, yeah, like, like a James Lipton type question. That's great. That's if awesome. you met God, what would you hope to say? <laughs> <laughs> so let great. us know if you are interested in making another. One hundred percent. That sounds super fun. <laughs> I like that. I think you should also do like Terminus Steampunk Edition, where you have to play like board games while you're doing it. You know, <laughs> we, what I mean? someone asked if we could play like Jenga or something. Oh, that'd be awesome, and it would. Probably be more comp because we already have the setup to like plug into HDMI and all yeah, that. Yeah. Now we had talked about maybe doing one with like a D and D session with like oh, an all stars of like three or four of the best. That'd people. be great. That'd be awesome. I've I've done a bit of D not to brag, but I've done a bit of DMing regular DM my- right here, guys. <laughs> this guy. Yeah, nothing. Uh, that, nothing says chick magnet. Like, Level twenty DM uh, dungeon master. Hey, baby, you like my crit rolls? No, it's not. Just put on my wizard robe, wizard robe and hat. <laughs> <laughs> All you gotta do is find a lady that's into it too. That's true. Mm-hmm. My my lady is not, but I still love her anyway. Yeah. <laughs> she 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 nerds out with you with other things. Plus, so. you could always like trick her into it, honey. Uh, we're gonna go out to eat. You just gotta roll and to see. Where we're <laughs> <laughs> oh man, a roll uh, like a random uh, table for a date. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Table. Ooh. Yeah. Right. Give me your thoughts. I'm pretty. All right, let's cut it off before we give away any more ideas. <laughs> yeah, right. Look me up for Keith Brooks nerd romance ideas. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's all the time we have for. Uh, we'll plug uh, your the eye once the again. The eye in Big Trouble in Little China Town. Search yeah. for it on iTown, iTunes, or iTunes. iTunes or Gorgle or uh, <laughs> Yartar, Sun uh, or. Uh, uh, um, wherever you see your board course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then Terminus. Thank you, Terminus, for having me. Terminus Conference and Festival. Um, and Thea. 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 Play, plug Thea once again. Go to Thea.network every Wednesday to see Terminus Live once again if you didn't watch it tonight. Terminus Live pre recorded. <laughs> and then also plug Terminus itself, June 15th through the 17th. Submissions are open now. Or no, game submissions are game still, submissions open. still open. Film submissions are not open anymore. Sorry, you missed Sorry. your chance. Sorry, guys. Badges are on sale. Visit terminusevent.com for more details. Oh, and I think that's it. Yay! Bye. I lost every round of Mario Kart. <laughs> Yay. Yay! Bye, everybody. Bye. It's my fault.